Let's talk about space-time intervals. So I put this in here with the sad bear saying, I'm afraid of doing the space crime because I don't want to do the space time. That's why I put that there. So let's discuss invariant quantities. What do we mean by that? Well, invariant means it doesn't vary, it doesn't change. So Einstein, he saw that absolute time and absolute space, they change when going from one reference frame to another. But there's some quantities that do remain the same, and this is actually really important in relativity when you're doing more advanced things. Quantities that actually stay the same from one reference frame to another are really important. So that's why we call these invariant quantities. So there's a few of them that uh, we can talk about. So first of all, we've got proper time interval, and hey, we've already learned about that, haven't we? That's delta t0, that's the proper time. And we've also got proper length. Hey, we've also learned about that, that's l0. And now we have a new one. It's called the space-time interval, and it's delta s. So this right here is the new one, and that's the one we're going to be investigating a little bit further. In order to understand this, I think it helps to look at uh, what we call space-time diagrams. So these are very common in relativity, especially in physics, of course. So um, when we talk about space-time diagrams, what we're considering here is the x, first of all, will be on the yeah, x-axis, sure, that's the that's the space, and then time, it turns out, will be on the y-axis. So it's x versus t, or sorry, t versus x. But the thing is, this one right here, for example, they have different dimensions, right? So this one has dimensions of time, this one has dimensions of length, which is fine normally. But it turns out in relativity, it becomes way easier later on in order to actually use something different. So instead in relativity, what we like to do, we like to use ct for the scale or for the um, units on the y-axis, and we still just use x for the x-axis. Now you might think that's a little bit weird, but it turns out it's going to have some nice features. First of all, it's going to end up uh, to where they're going to have the same uh, units. If you think about speed is in meters per second, let's say, and this is in seconds. So that means you end up with something in meters, and this is something in meters. So it turns out they both have the same dimensions in that sense. But also because um, it turns out if you do it this way, that something like this right here, which is, this is like the what we're going to call the... Um, the world line of a photon. So for example, this right here could be light. So this would be a photon of light going the speed of light, right? So its speed is equal to C. And it turns out this right here will have an angle then of 45 degrees. And so will this, of course. And it turns out that's a handy thing in relativity later on. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the space-time interval itself. I put this, oh my god, I just found out that Albert Einstein's a real person. All this time I just thought he was a theoretical physicist. So if we look at this right here, if we want to measure how far apart two events are, so event A and event B, if I want to measure how far apart they are in space-time, then we use this thing that we call the space-time interval, this delta S here. Okay, so this space-time interval, that's this. And so how do we do it? Well, this space-time interval, this distance right here, it's kind of weird, but it turns out uh, some of it will make sense, I think. Some of it's a bit strange, but it's okay. Uh, this right here is a 90 degree triangle, uh, sorry, yeah, 90 degrees. So uh, this one right here, what would this length right here be? Well, this would be um, some sort of C delta T. That would be this length here. And this length right here would be some sort of delta X. Well, it turns out the equation for the space-time interval, you could say it's almost like Pythagoras thing where this squared equals this squared plus this squared, except it goes this squared equals this squared minus this squared. But you don't have to memorize it. It's on your data booklet, but let me just write it down. So first of all, it's delta S, let's do that quantity there squared. It's going to equal this C delta T, this quantity here, but we're going to say that's squared, minus delta x squared. So it's almost like Pythagoras theorem, except there's a minus there. Uh, but that's really all we need here. Hooray!